What does a ping pong ball have to do with earthquakes? That depends on its color. If I color it like a classic beach ball, I can use it to very clearly illustrate the focal mechanism of an earthquake. Hello and welcome. In this video I will be showing you how you can visualize the various types of earthquake focal mechanisms with the help of a beach ball. You will learn how you can use a Schmidt net to map the rupture plane and the accompanying perpendicular nodal plane graphically as a beach ball. This provides a clear representation of focal mechanisms on maps and allows us to identify tectonic processes via similar focal mechanisms. Focal mechanisms of earthquakes, seismologists also speak of fault plane solutions, are described quantitatively by the three angles strike, dip and slip. They are summarized in this diagram. Simply put, two sections of rock slip past each other on a flat rupture plane. The direction is indicated by the dotted arrow. The strike indicates the intersection line between the rupture plane and the surface. The dip is the inclination to the horizontal and the slip is the direction of movement of the rock sections towards each other. Every fracture radiates seismic waves. The first ground motion at the location of a seismometer depends on the position of this location relative to the earthquake. Hence, for the P-wave there are areas distributed across the earth with positive and negative initial displacements. Let me now show you these areas from the perspective of the earthquake. The line shown is the rupture plane. There are two areas for compression with positive initial P-wave displacements here and here. These are colored in black. The movement on the plane leads to a compression by the P-wave in these two quadrants. In the other two quadrants dilatation or expansion occurs with negative initial displacement. Orthogonally to the rupture plane is an auxiliary plane which separates the areas from each other. The position of this second imaginary plane depends directly on the direction of slip. Both surfaces are called nodal planes. Now the 3D representation of the nodal planes is not very clear and the quantitative description of the rupture via the three angles strike, dip and slip is a little hard to imagine. This is where the ping pong ball comes in. Imagine that both nodal planes were to pass through the ball like this and this. The intersection line of the nodal planes with each other is exactly the diameter of the ball in this direction. The intersection lines of the nodal planes with the ball, on the other hand, are bent, as you can see here. They divide the ball into four quadrants. The two quadrants marked in black, here and here, are the areas of compression and the white ones the areas of dilatation, corresponding to positive and negative initial displacements. If I now rotate the ball, the position of the rupture plane and the auxiliary plane changes in space. However, it also changes the two-dimensional view that you see. This 2D representation is used in seismology to represent fault plane solutions on a map. However, there are two small differences. Firstly, when you view the ping pong ball like this, it corresponds to an orthographic projection. If you, as the observer, are far enough away, the projection lines are parallel to each other. This projection is also used on maps. Here, this is a view of the Earth from space. For the representation of fault plane solutions, a slightly different projection is widely used, a Schmidt net. It is an azimuthal spherical projection in which the projection lines are projected in circle segments around the point of intersection of the sphere with the projection plane. This only changes the representation of our beach ball slightly. However, the meridian lines are further apart from each other at the edge of the projection. This makes it easier to tell them apart. So, this was the first difference. The second difference from the ping pong ball is the perspective. We view the seismological beach ball from above. In addition, we do not look at it from the outside, but look into the inside of the ball. This is also described as a view into the lower hemisphere. For this purpose, imagine a reverse fault. The strike should be oriented north-south and the rupture plane should dip towards the east. 
the dip angle of the rupture plane should be 45 degrees and the slip on the plane exactly 90 degrees, that is, directly upwards. In this case, the auxiliary plane also has a strike in north-south direction and a dip of minus 45 degrees. Now look into the imaginary hemisphere around the hypercenter of the quake from above. The two nodal planes now appear as band lines. The quadrants of compression directly above and below the quake, both are colored in black. The two side quadrants expand and hence remain white. You have now learned how a fault plane solution is represented qualitatively as a beach ball. In practice, this can be realized by hand or using various software tools. For example, with the scripting language GMT, Generic Mapping Tools, which is very frequently used for illustrations in geophysical publications. Here I will be showing you the manual variant. It very clearly shows how the nodal planes of the beach balls are projected. For this purpose I have prepared a Schmidtnet. This is a view from above into the hemisphere. You can see that, unlike an autographic projection, the meridians in east-west direction are at equal intervals. I will now draw in the reverse fold which I demonstrated to you using the ping pong ball. Firstly, the nodal plane with a 45 degrees dip in an easterly direction. Because the view is of the inside of the lower hemisphere, the intersection line is here on the right side. The nodal plane must now be positioned orthogonally to it. This means it needs to include the plane normal of the rupture plane. Now imagine the normal in space. It runs towards the bottom left and intersects the hemisphere right at the east-west line at a 90 degrees angle to the rupture plane. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. All intersection lines which pass through this point correspond to planes orthogonal to the rupture plane. The simple case of the north-south striking auxiliary plane with a minus 45 degree dip is therefore located exactly here. For other slip directions, auxiliary planes are located here. and here, for example. If the strike is not oriented in north-south direction, the entire beach ball is rotated. Hence, a pure reverse fold appears on the beach ball as a black lens. A pure normal fold with the same nodal planes is colored in the exact reverse manner. A pure strike slip fold, on the other hand, which also takes place along a vertical rupture plane, is represented as shown on the beach ball. We are looking from above at the two vertical nodal planes. If we only see the beach ball, it is not possible to distinguish which nodal plane is the rupture plane. This is due to the equivalence of the compression and the datation quadrants in the case of fractures on each of the two nodal planes. Furthermore, additional information from geological sources or the distribution of aftershocks is necessary. Complicated focal mechanisms can be described with the help of the moment tensor. Combination of multiple shear faults or also focal mechanisms with changes in the fracture volume, such as in the case of an underground explosion. In this case, P waves with a positive initial displacement are emitted in all directions. Hence, the compression area extends out in all directions and the beach ball is colored entirely in black. In this video, you learned how fault plane solutions, or earthquake focal mechanisms, can be represented in the form of a beach ball. The colored ping pong ball was used to illustrate this. The seismological beach ball corresponds to an azimuthal projection of the nodal planes onto the lower hemisphere in the hypercenter. For pure reverse faults, this results in the diagram of a lens, which is colored in black. For normal faults, the same image is obtained, but with the colors reversed. 
strike slip folds appear as a cake cut into four equal pieces. Additional diagrams can also represent changes in volume or combinations of two fold displacements. The beach ball representation is helpful for illustrating fold plane solutions for many earthquakes. It allows common features to be identified and hence to deduce existent tectonic processes. <laughs> <laughs>